Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the motherboard tray, install the motherboard on it, the CPU, the CPU cooler, and the RAM. Um, if you don't have a motherboard tray, just start by mounting the motherboard inside the case and you can work on it inside there. The advantage of a motherboard tray is it's just easier, you don't, you're not stuck in the case. Another important thing to remember is you don't screw the motherboard directly onto the back of the case. There's holes in the back of the case where you would screw it on. You first install these brass standoffs into the case. That separates from the back of the motherboard and prevents a short. Yep. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is set up the CPU cooling block for the water cooling system. Um, this particular block doesn't come with nozzles, so we bought nozzles separately. In this case, we're using 3 eighths in of an inch, and we're using G14 threaded nozzles. So the first thing we're going to do is thread the nozzles into the CPU block. And make sure they're really tight. Okay, so for an or in order for this, this particular system to function properly, the temperature probe needs to be applied to the CPU block in order, in order for it to monitor the temperature and shut down the system in case it becomes too hot. So, in the instruction guide, and no one is too good to read the instruction guide, by the way. Always read the instructions because otherwise you will do something wrong. In the instruction guide it says to place it right on the edge of the gold block, so that's what I'm going to do using electrical tape. And you don't want to place it on the bottom of the sensor because the CPU will melt it and that would be bad. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is install the back bracket for the CPU cooler. Now this is only necessary on the Intel Core 2 processors because they don't already have back bracket installed. If you're using a cooler for an AMD processor, most of those already have back brackets you can just screw it right on. So this, the rubber piece is gonna go on the motherboard so that we avoid shorting anything out. Okay, now on the back bracket, I'm gonna screw in these posts that go through it to connect it on the top to the cooler. Okay, so now I have the rods mounted on the back plate and I'm going to push that through the pre-drilled holes in the motherboard for the cooler and keeping in mind that that little soft plate has to go in between. Okay, so that passes through nicely and I'm going to flip it over and you can see that I'm poking through over here and now we'll install the top portion. So next we're actually going to install the cooler for the CPU. Um, in this particular configuration, you put the CPU in the socket first, then you put the CPU cooler on top of that, and then you button it down with this on top of it using these screws and these springs which screw into the rods that we passed through before. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this which comes on top of the CPU cover. We're going to open up the CPU bracket, like so, and that's just a rod that lifts up, and then this lifts up like... So the box opens up and we have our CPU on top. Okay, so when you're putting the CPU in, it's very important to make sure that you orient it correctly. You notice this little, arrow, this little golden arrow on the corner here. There's a matching golden arrow on the plate right here, and those want to be on the same corner. So you're going to drop in. You should not have to force this. If you're forcing it, you're doing something wrong. It should slide in very easily just like that. Okay, so next we're going to latch the CPU down. You might get a little bit of resistance on this. That's normal. That's just latching it down. So we're going to apply the paste. Squirt a dab of it on. About that size. And we're just going to use the back of this to move it around and make sure it's all spread out. You, want to, you don't want to be too liberal with it, but you do want to make sure that the entire thing is covered. Okay, so now we're going to apply the CPU block. That's just going to sit on the processor, like that. And then this will slide in on top of it. Holding it in place. And now we install the thumb screws to hold it in with the springs under them. It's helpful to do the corners first to make sure it's held down. Now we're just going to tighten all the thumb screws, and it's very important that you don't over tighten them because you definitely do not want to crush the CPU. Now we have our 4 gigabytes of DDR2 
RAM to install. Keep in mind that if you're using a 32-bit operating system like XP 32-bit or Vista 32-bit, the system will only detect up to 3 gigabytes. You have to use a 64-bit operating system to detect more than 3 gigabytes. Now we're going to install the RAM into our four DDR2 RAM slots. So we, I opened up the clips as you saw, and you want to make sure that they're lined up properly with the notches because they will only install facing in one direction. And when you push them in, it should close the clips automatically. Okay, and now we're just going to do that four times. Okay, so now we're going to mount the motherboard to the attachable motherboard tray. We are going to screw the motherboard into the tray. First of all, the back panel plate, which matches up with the connectors on the back of the motherboard, needs to be switched with the one that came in the case because the connectors are obviously different. Now, it may scare you to know this, but you have to use a hammer to hit it out, and I, I prefer to use a soft-headed one so you don't damage anything. You can also use the back of a screwdriver or kind of just push it, but they're not particularly easy to get out usually. And since we won't be using this one again anyway, it doesn't really matter. Voila. And this mounts from the inside. And this can take a while, so be patient. Okay, so now we're going to mount the motherboard tray back into the computer. Okay, so now the motherboard, we've successfully installed it into the case. We've lined up the backing plate, and it's correctly sticking out through the back like it should be, and everything's in.